Okay. We're going to try something new. I, uh, I feel like there's not enough people in the hobby who have videos and stuff about just quad thoughts and ideas about what's actually going on with quads. Um, I mean, there's Kebab does a great job with his quad theory videos where he's just, you know, talking about things that he thinks are happening that aren't necessarily based on science, but are just what seems to make sense. And so <clears throat> I think, yeah, I, mean, I just want to talk more about stuff like that. Um, I'm, I don't know, I get bored with just posting videos of flying and whatnot, and I know that people get sick of them, and it's, everyone just likes to watch their own flying more than anyone else's, to be honest. So, I think I want to move more towards kind of just, like, talking about stuff like this and getting people more interested in what all these different little things are. Uh, there's just so many variables, and it's there's a lot of variables that people aren't even thinking about when they're doing builds and stuff like that. So I just want to draw more attention to that. And I guess the idea is so that we can eventually make it to the perfect quad, right? But at the same time, I think that's kind of a joke in that there's so many things about quads that are arbitrary and that we know we like what we like and what you like may not be what the next guy likes. Um, I don't think the perfect quad's really like possible is, a, is an overall one perfect quad that works for everybody type of thing. I think that each of us can, based on different things that we learn, make the perfect quad for ourselves. So I guess just talking about the different little variables and stuff uh, that are possible with quads can get more people thinking about how to build the perfect quad for themselves. With that said... Props, 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 props. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about something that I noticed with Emacs props that seem to be making a world of difference in my builds. And I kind of have Emacs props on all my quads now. Okay. I had to go get some more props and motors and stuff to be able to continue this discussion. So, we're going to start this talking about this prop in particular. This is the Emacs Avan 3-inch, 3-inch prop, all right? And this was my introduction to um, Emacs props, basically. This is the first Emacs prop that I flew. I love 3-inch quads. I've had a billion of them. Um, I've flown this prop on a lot of them, and they've been awesome. There's a video, I have like two different videos. One of them I think is called Damn D2, and the other one's called Me and the Devil. And it's... Uh, a little three inch quad back before the toothpick days in the days of the tooth rip <laughs> um, I basically built this little quad called DZ and then I built another one called D2 how to split in it and whatever 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 I had these props in it um, oh wow interesting I'm learning things on the go for right now yeah basically that setup had these little motors which are Emacs 1106 uh, 6,000 kV motors on it and it ripped like it was I, it only I only could fly 3s because these motors can only take 3s and I had a full size split 2 on it and it was like 110 or 112 millimeter frame um, and it was carrying a lot of weight like I had like brass standoffs on it all kinds of stuff but basically I mean it handled itself pretty well pretty surprisingly well and it was just crazy the type of thrust I was able to get off of these tiny little motors. And at the time, I didn't realize what was contributing to that a lot was these props. I mean, I tried HQ props and stuff at the time, too, and I just kept going back to these. Um, but I've been flying now different versions of Avan props like this on quads for a while now. So, moving on to closer to like present day... Um, another quad that I built was this, get this guy out of here, this version of DZ, which is not much left now because it's kind of been converted to a bunch of other things I've been testing, but, um, this was with some Emacs 1306 motors and the same props, uh, I flew these props on both 1106 and 1306 versions of three inch quads and they've been awesome each time, right? And I mean, they're a light prop. They, I mean, it looks like a crazy pitch, 
but it kind of starts real high and then it mellows out towards the end, which is something that's very interesting. Um, we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, so, and then more closer, even closer to present day, I've been flying them on little two inch quads and stuff. So stuff that people would fly as like a toothpick build. I've been putting like 1105s or 1104s and stuff on them and sticking these little two inch props on them, right? And so I want you guys to all look at these props and see my GoPro keeps turning. Oh God, <laughs> my GoPro keeps turning off. Um, I want you to see the commonality between these right now. Do you see this right here? See how the prop goes down to like below, it meets like the, it's not just stopping at the top of the bell there. There you go, that's a lot better. It's not just stopping at the top of the bell, it goes down there. It's down here at like this one too. It goes down below, you know, goes down here below the top of the bell. And so whereas like, let me show you even more actually. So that was uh, two inch and three inch. This is the two and a half inch prop right here. And it also, has this little awesome dip that goes down here below the top of the bell, right? And so instead of having a gap, and just for, just just to keep the trend going, let me show you on the five inch also. On my five inch quad, look at that, all that right there. All that material that goes down there and how there's not much of a gap between the prop and the top of the bell there they just they really hug it so <clears throat> um, I just realized that that's like that's a that's the thing that Emacs is doing with all their props and I haven't noticed it as much on, or I haven't really noticed it on other props except so let me here let me like let, let me take a step back these props right here on my main five inch quad my hyper low vert free b2 um, these are the Emacs Avon Scimitar 5 by 26 by 3 So this is supposedly a 2.6 pitch prop, which, I mean, looking at this, this looks a lot higher than 2.6 pitch. Um, looking at, like, the end of the prop, I can see how maybe this could get measured at 2.6. I was reading a comment on uh, Emacs Instagram the other day where someone was asking where they measure their props at, like, what point in the prop do they measure the prop, the pitch at, and they said, basically, they do it in, like, a some sort of, like, a simulator or something that it's not just, like, measuring the angle of the prop. It's angle, it's, it's measuring, measuring actually how it would work in a, I think it, it's, like, a viscous material, so, like, if it were going through water or something, right? Um, that's how they measure the pitch of it. And it's not just based on the angle that the blade is is pitched at, right? <laughs> For lack of a better word. Um, which is interesting. But they also said that they do, they base it on some point in the prop too where they say, all right, this point here is 2.6 degrees. Uh, so I don't know, I thought that was interesting. The, let's see, where, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Okay, so... I said I haven't seen that sort of thing in other props much. So these props right here are my other, like my current favorite five inch prop to fly right now on my current build, right? And my, my current build is a Hyperlow Vert Free V2. I fly 6S. Um, my motors, or the motors I'm flying currently are the Zing, uh, what are they? 2208, 1800 KV, right? And so, it's a, it's not super heavy. I can't remember how much it weighs. I want to say like seven something. I don't even remember. Seven forty maybe. Anyways, um, these props are awesome on that quad, and I honestly got these as a gift from somebody and totally didn't expect them to be awesome. Like I just was like, yeah, they look like basic props, whatever. And they have the thing though, and I didn't really realize this at the time because I wasn't looking so much at the thing. Which, when I say the thing, I'm referring to this right here. This little area right near the base of the prop that goes below the bell, or below the top of the bell. And so, these 
been amazing. The resolution on these props with my setup is amazing. Like they fly so good. And I'm not even sure, honestly, if I can say I like the scimitar better than these yet, because I haven't flown them enough yet and I haven't fully tuned my quad to those yet. But these props, I, I, I love these props and they're so durable, they're so great. I, yeah, uh, props to T-Motor, haha, <laughs> for lack of a better word, props. A great job, T-Motor, these props are the best. Um, so, what I think is going on with this, and actually, before I get to that point, I want to show you some other props just to show you that they're not doing the thing. So these are some doll props. These were one of my favorite props when I was flying my brat. Um, I think they're like the 50, what, 52, T5249C. And so if you look at like, and I'm using a different motor, but it really doesn't matter. It's the same concept. Uh, there's the, this little bit of prop goes here and it stays above the top of the bell there, right? There's no... Um, yep, there's just all that gap right there, right? So then we take a, another one of my favorite props by Gem Fan, which is the Wind Dancer. And the Wind Dancer actually starts to get into doing the thing. And I, this is my first time actually looking at all these props to, to verify this. So it it still stays above the like the prop or the top of the bell there, but it starts to dip a little bit down into there where it's got like a nice little thickness near the base of the motor, right? Or near the base of the, the prop. Uh, another one of the props I've really liked recently are these, which are the, they're originally the MCK props, but this is the kebab version of the uh, Gym Fan 5146. Yeah, wait, 50, yeah, 40. 51466 is what it says, whatever. But yeah, they're great props. Um, it really depends on your build. But they they actually kind of, I mean, they, they somewhat, since they're gem fans, similar to the one dancer, so they're smart, they know what they're doing. They start to get into doing it a little bit, but it's still well above the top of the bell there, you see, right? It's all that space. And so, for again, and then right now I'm showing you, this is the gym fan prop. And then this is the T-motor prop that does do the thing, right? Where it gets down there underneath the top of the bell. And then we got the Emax prop, which is very much, I keep having to turn my GoPro back on so I can actually see what we're seeing here. Emax prop, which very much does the thing. <laughs> where it dips down there. So what is, what is happening with the thing? What is the point of all this, right? So what I'm trying to say is that I think for, well, this is what I know. This is what I know based on what is working for me through having this little extra bit of prop right here is that you get a ton of amount of, let me just have something in view there so I can just like not have to be doing something with my hands the whole time. How about that? There we go. Hey, there we go. Let's throw these in there too. We got all kinds of stuff. Beautiful quads. This is this is actually a mini me of this quad in an amazing way. It's awesome. They fly exactly the same. Um, so okay. So what's happening is that having this here. I am had to pick something up. I got to be able to show you guys, right? Having this little bit of prop here, or extra bit of prop that's going down below the bell here, is taking advantage of all, oh, see, look, like, this isn't even screwed down all the way. So like, if I push this down, you see there's very little gap between the top of the bell and the prop there. And then it goes down and contours on, around it almost, and then comes down, right? And so what all, having all this does is it's like just so much low in control. Like the way that I like to fly is like little, little blips, right? I like to do little blips into tricks. So it's like, I like to cruise around and then blip, and and then I like to like kill throttle and then do some sort of trick in air mode essentially, right? Like I like to just have my throttle basically dead and then like to, you know, swivel around and do something with very low stick basically, right? At very low throttle. And so in flying like that, being able to have all this prop and all this control down low like that, it basically gives you like control at like low... I mean, at low throttle, it's just low throttle control. It's like you can just have 
you can basically kill the throttle and still have enough prop down low here to be able to like flip yourself around or flick into something and I, I mean to me it just I, I feel like I can be more technical in my tricks and stuff in having this um, just in that I can it just gives you that much more prop down there and you just I don't know it just works for me it works and the other thing I think is awesome about both these designs or all honestly all all of these the Emacs and this T-Motor design are just you have all this like not fat I guess but yeah but all this thickness it's thick <laughs> all this thickness down here and then it contours out and it gets thinner and so it makes for a nice durability for one because you don't have a bunch of a bunch of thick prop out here to to be and more leverage against the prop down here right so it's like it's like like a tree right like where it's just the base the trunk of the tree you know the base of it is very solid and then it goes up into like the lighter branches right and so just it's just a good support system but also just with the way that you're able to make the prop um i feel like you can make the prop lighter in doing this because you can just put all the all the material that you could have had way out here like say this was like not rounded here say it just went straight all that material that could have been here is getting put into the base here which makes for a lighter prop out here they they're not they're pretty i'll say i've, I've only crashed like once or twice i think with these so far they're one of the times was like into a tree and i just completely shredded one of these and i mean that you know that makes sense i can't really say whether they're 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 relatively durable i'll say these props i can definitely say are extremely durable i've been amazed at how much i can put these through um but yeah so basically the overall thing is that having this little little bit of extra prop down low right here that goes below the belt, is it's just taking advantage of all this air down low and it allows you to just have thrust, you have just big, really like, good thrust at like a lower, at a lower stick basically. Like I can, I can get into the air and hover at a lower throttle with these sort of props because it's basically when the prop is spinning up, it doesn't have to get to a super fast speed for it to really generate the thrust because the bulk of the prop is down in the lower portion of the prop, right? Which I think also might work pretty well for racing. I know that these T-Motor props are actually a racing prop. Kind of makes sense that you have all this low-end power down here to be able to just... I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know. I can't talk for racing as much. I'm just trying to start getting serious about racing now, so it's a whole different thing. But I feel like these props would probably do pretty well on a race setup i guess i should try them anyways these are my quad thoughts as i'm going to be calling this um i think that everyone needs to be thinking about these sort of things when they're building uh you know at, at, at the very least the first thing i told Omis this the other day the four forces of flight are thrust lift drag weight always think of those four things when you're putting a build together that's why i always have these little quads and are not little quads but just quads in general that are low drag like look at these this like i said this is a mini me this little guy is a mini me of this guy and they're both skinny as hell right and it's because i want low drag i want it to be able to cut through the air i want it to be powerful i want it to be nimble i want it to be able to whip it around and i also want it to be efficient and so I definitely, that's one thing I can say about these two though. They're not as efficient as these props, I think, which is weird to me, but I, that just seems to be the case so far. Uh, I can, well, yeah, I can ramble about all this type of stuff forever, which is awesome, which means, hey, maybe I'll make more videos like this if you guys respond well to this or like the idea of this whole me talking to the camera from behind the camera rather than freaking staring at my face and me talking about stupid things that aren't relevant to quads. Whatever, 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 to each their own. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Write your thoughts in the comments and stuff. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me you know science and you know more than me, whatever. I don't care. Let's talk about it. I just want people to start talking about this stuff. Peace.